Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Pastor Greg Marilla. There's no place like home. It's good to be back from Haiti, Porta Prince. Let me tell you something, my brothers out there, those that I met out there, thank you so much. If you're watching the video, thank you so much for your hospitality and your generosity. I really felt the presence of Jesus in your country. Thank you so much for exposing me to the things that you exposed and to show me that God is real. And thank you, Father God, for teaching us how to live out of your goodness. We take a lot of things for granted, but Father God, as you show it to us and expose it to us, we can repent. And you're wonderful, Lord. You're wonderful, Lord. Come on, let's give God a hand and praise him. Praise the Lord. Raise your hand and surrender to him. Thank you, Lord. It's a sign of surrender. Praise God, a sign of worship. I lift my hands and worship. As I live, as I praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Get ready to receive your miracle. Praise God. Well, we're starting a new series. Uh, we, we've been teaching for three months on the glory of God. The first series was living in the glory. The second one was understanding the circle of glory. And this third um, teaching is glory and honor. Glory and honor. Praise the Lord. Glory and honor. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. If, I have, I have something to say to you. If you want to walk in the glory, amen, I love it. Let, let her praise the Lord. Please let her praise the Lord. I got somebody praising God in here. Praise God. Don't you understand the Bible says in Psalm 150, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So she's praising God for us. She's allowing the spirit of God to come here and dwell in this place. Praise God. <clears throat> praise the Lord. If you want to walk in glory, David, we will be training tomorrow. Praise God. If, good to see you, son. And I'm praying for mom, okay? She'll be fine. If you want to walk in glory, you're going to have to give honor. You cannot step into that dimension of glory without giving honor. So that means <clears throat> we're going to have to change some things that we've been doing. We've been, uh, we've been, uh, yeah, sir, I hear you. We've been walking and working with two realms, realms, that's the word I heard, two dimensions, uh, Deacon Frank. The first dimension is faith. Man, we love faith. God is faith. That's faith. God's language is faith, and, and so on and so on. But God is bigger than faith, praise the Lord. See, God is bigger than faith. I know, I know this is shocking to you, but God is bigger than faith. God is glory, praise God. And see, faith and the anointing we've been stuck on. See, uh, Ron, we've been stuck on. The anointing is empowerment to help you accomplish what you need to accomplish. So when you go to work and you fulfill <clears throat> a job task, that's the anointing of God in your life. Praise the Lord. Patty, when you teach and, and, and you get through that stubborn child, that's the anointing of God. Carrie, when, when you are with your family and you're fixing the budget and so on, that's the anointing of God. Jody, my daughter, when you're managing the business, that's the anointing of God. It has nothing to do with you. Okay? Praise the Lord. It's the anointing of God. If it wasn't for the anointing of God, you wouldn't even know how to lead a cockroach. Praise the Lord. Amen. Receive it, son. Everything good comes from God. So faith and anointing Write this down, those of you taking notes, has been working through us. See? Faith and anointing works through us. Faith and anointing, those dimensions that we've been in all our life, basically. Some of us here have been in, in church all our life. We, we've been faith, word of faith people. We've been word of faith. I'm not saying that we're going to stop being word of faith. I'm just saying we're going to another level. Um, Kenneth Hagin used to call it greater glory. Praise the Lord. And that's what's happening right now. We're going into a dimension 
of greater glory. But before you can step into that greater glory, you're going to have to give honor to God and learn how to. You just can't, you just can't walk in that dimension any old way, praise the Lord. See? Now, faith, I said before, faith, and the anointing works through you. And glory, the glory, you have to work with the glory. See, when you step into a dimension of glory, now it's no longer you <coughs> using God's faith or his anointing. Now you are following totally God. And your dependency is totally on God. Not on your job and not on your neighbor. Did you hear that? You ain't supposed to be depending on your job, okay? You're not supposed to be depending on your neighbor. You're not supposed to be depending on your check to come once a month. I wish I had a witness in here. Praise the Lord. Your total dependency should be on God. So once, once you, you, you break this barrier and once you go inside into this place called the glory, you're going to see what God's going to do with you. Now, for you to pre be in that place called the glory, you're going to have to properly connect. Some of us have not been properly connected. <laughs> we, we look for God only when we're in trouble. We look for God only when we need him. <laughs> Don't shut me down because I'm teaching good. Praise the Lord. See, so you have to be properly connected. For you to depend on God, that means everything. Everything that you're before, before you do anything. You have to go to God and consult with him. So God will become your concierge. He'll become your counselor. See? Some of you, uh, uh, yeah, I'll say it, Lord. You want me to say it? Some of us have been taught so incorrectly that we've been molested in the spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We've been molested in the spirit. Improper teaching. See, but God wants to remove that from you today. And God wants to heal you. Praise the Lord. Now, the word honor means high respect or esteem. You have to give God high respect. High respect. You have to respect the Lord. You have to esteem him. And it is a privilege to be associated with God. It is a privilege <clears throat> to be associated with God. Praise the Lord. When you are associated with God, you will live in a glory zone. You hear that? Don't worry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a while with this one because this is very spiritual. See, this is not natural. The Bible says that the, the, the supernatural things for the natural man is foolish. Some of you are right now saying, what in the world is he saying? That's all right. Just hold on to my tailgate. Hold on to my, to my coat. Hold on to the tail of my coat. I'll bring you in. Praise the Lord. See, I'm proper connected. Praise God. So I qualify to stand here. See, I'm properly connected. I serve and I sow. I just gave you three, three words to help you in your life. Being properly connected, serving, and sowing. Daddy Don, when Jesus had his 12 disciples, Jesus didn't do the pattern of the disciple. The disciple did the pattern of Jesus. Okay? Jesus didn't turn around and say, but what do you think, Matthew? What should we do next? Peter, what should we do? See, Jesus was connected to the Father. So whatever Jesus said, he heard the Father say. So that's being properly connected. And Jesus was always serving and sowing. No. Who fed the thousands? The disciple or Jesus? I ain't getting no help in here. <clears throat> yeah. If you open your mouth and just praise him, you'll see that, that, that dilemma that you are experiencing right now will leave out of your body. Because I'm trying to bring you into the glory, but you want to stay capped into faith you want to be capped in see we got to be careful he gave me two words last night and I was like 
I couldn't do anything but just listen to him. And he said to me, tell my people to get rid of vanity. Vanity. You know what vanity is? You depend on your own ability. <laughs> Prideful. Egotistic. You know this is God because I can't say words like this, man. Praise the Lord. Full of ego. And when you're full of ego, you know what you do? You edge God out. See? He can't do it. And you know what the enemy says? You want me to say it? You know what the devil says? Out of my bag of trick trickery, I won't give up doubt or vanity. Because if they doubt, they definitely go without. <clears throat> if they doubt, I could put a blindfold around their mind and do whatever I want with them. I don't care if they go to church. I don't care if they, they read their word. But when they get properly connected, that's when I lose them. When they start serving and sowing, that's when I lose them. And then he turns around, and you know, he always self-justify himself because the enemy is full of vanity. I work for him! What kind of God will put you in a situation and watch you from heaven? Come to me and I'll help you. That's what he says to you. Just shake my hand. Come on. Make covenant with me. See, the enemy wants to make covenant with you. And you don't really understand either you're in covenant with God or you're in covenant with the enemy. So that's why this place called the glory is going to undress you and make you whole. See? But you're not going to be able to get in there until you learn how to give honor. If you want to walk in the glory, you must give God honor. So that means you got to get rid of your pride. You got to get rid of your vanity. I used to do. I can do. You don't know what I had. You, stop it. Don't you understand that you're going through the process? There's a reason. There's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. And God's trying to humble you so much, and you know what you're doing? You don't want to be humble. You want to be prideful. You don't want to give up the flesh. It feels good. If the truth be known, you don't even like the spirit. All right, go to John chapter 8. Well, he, what's he doing this morning? Reprimanding me? Well, I ain't reprimanding you. If it hurts, then good. <laughs> I'm doing my job, praise God. Get that thing off of you. Uh, Mother Vicky, aguijon, that's how they call it, right? An aguijon, something over your head, you know what I'm saying? Get rid of that aguijon, you know, get rid of that. Uh, for those of you that don't understand that word, that Spanish word, get rid of that monkey off your back. Get rid of that thing you've been going through that's stopping you from experiencing the glory of God. Now in John chapter 8, verse 54, you'll, you'll have to go there. And then once you go there, then I can articulate a little bit more. Praise God. It's a divine exchange. You're going from the natural to the supernatural. Why do you think you're in the house of God? You need it, man. You know, son, Dustin, you need vision. You need revelation. You got a daughter to take care. You got a, a wife to take care of, man. You got you to take care of. You can't keep on bumping into walls and not getting no result. Same old routine over and over. I pay my bills and I'm broke. I, can't, I don't even have enough for Christmas. Can I have a witness in here? It's time to go into the glory. You have to work this thing inside out, not outside in. You got it, David? It ain't going to work. Inside out. Inside out, not outside in. Okay, you there? John 8, 54. Really? Everybody's there? Praise the Lord, man. I love it. Okay, so I can read in it, right? This is Jesus speaking. He says, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. In other words, if I walk in vanity, it doesn't purpose anything. It is my Father who honors me. Somebody has to validate you. Somebody is evaluating you. You've kind of forgotten God is watching you. 
He's watching everything you do. So somebody's always evaluating you, and he's the only one that can validate you. Why are you looking for man to validate you? When it's God that validates you. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Go to Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25, please. Thank you, Father. Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. (coughs) Amen. That's right. I'm going to uproot a little bit before I can plant something in you. And I promise you, by the time you leave, you'll feel a lot better. And then you you got this mess fixed. Okay? So that we're in a mess. We get upset. We depend on people, ability, and they let us down, and we get upset. I know, I know I'm talking to the right bunch here, because I know you. I'm your pastor. And then you curse a storm. You kick the wall. That's stupid. Now you got to fix the hole in the wall. Come on now, praise the Lord. I may be in Haiti, but I know what's going on over here. Because when I connect and I pray for you, I know what's going on. Praise the Lord. And it's all because of pride and vanity and because of doubt. You can't see, have no vision, no revelation. I'm living from the outside in. I should be living from the inside out. You there? Proverbs 25, right? Verse 27. I guess I can read it. It is not good to eat too much honey. Some of us are eating so much, we're not getting large anymore in the flesh, we're getting large in the spirit. And slothful at the same time. Just used to the same old, same old. It's not good to eat too much honey. To seek one's own glory is not glory. So Jesus is saying, if if I turn the spotlight on me, it won't amount to anything. And some of us want to put the spotlight on themselves so everyone can see what you got. And you should be putting the spotlight on Jesus, and Jesus will put it on the Father. That's called properly connected. But see, we don't understand this if we're in the flesh. Is it possible you could be a Christian and carnal? You better believe it. You know it. You could be so carnal, you smell like pork chop. Put a little garlic on you, a little onion, and somebody will eat you. Ow! So, if I put the spotlight on me, the works will never have honor. My works will not have no type of honor. Then God's work is not honorable. Okay? Okay? Go to Psalms 111. Psalm 111, please. Psalm 111. We're going we're gonna to have to move from this faith and anointing into the glory of God. And the glory of God is another dimension. It's a spirit world. And then after that, you know what's coming, family? I have to tell you, because I'm a pastor, I have to tell you. The coming of Christ. After the glory comes the coming of Christ. We've experienced so many uh, gifts and so on, and yet we don't know how to use it. We're going back into that time but we've seen signs, wonders, and miracles. It's going to start happening, you know. People that need a breakthrough, people that need kidneys will get kidneys. People that need a, a blood transfusion will get the blood transfusion. People that need a new heart will get the new heart. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever trespass you is going to have to leave you because you're walking in the zone, the glory zone. Praise God. Somebody say, I'm reaping the glory. I Say, I sold enough seeds, you know. Say it. Say it, say it, don't be cute, say it. Say, I sowed a lot of seeds. A lot of seeds I've sown. Not only financial seed, but I've served and I've sold. Say that. Say, I've served and I've sold. And now I'm getting properly connected. So I'm going to reap the glory. Whatever you, whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap, right? 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So in, in Psalm 111, verse 3 says, His work is honorable and glorious. His righteousness endure forever. See? His work is honorable. If you want your work to be honorable, then go into glory. Stop saying, stop saying what you're seeing and start saying what you want to see. Write that down. Stop saying what you, what you see and start saying what you want to see. Because seeing is believing. See, you say it enough, I'm healed in the blood of Jesus. I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning, I ain't going to have this, you ain't going to have this. And last night, all kind of stuff came out of my nose and this, and I was like, praise the Lord. I was in the, the edge of the bed. My wife was like, you okay? I said, man, I said, praise the Lord. You, she, you didn't hear me complaining. Oh, <laughs> I'm going through it already. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add words and make myself feel bur- better or worse? No, I got to get out of this thing. So I got to shift. My, 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 my flesh, my mind got to stop thinking for me. I got to think in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Say it with me. Believing is, seeing is believing. So you see it, you believe it. So you have to speak it into existence. He's giving you words of glory. Praise the Lord. How do you think he made the world? Through his words. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm starting to feel better now. Come on, mucus. Get out of my body. In the name of Jesus. Amen. See, she's agreeing with me. Praise the Lord, mama. I love that little thing on her head, too. That's gorgeous. Praise the Lord. So his works are honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. That's right. I heard you, Lord. Write this down. The God of glory is a God of love. And that's what you need and I need. I need some love. The God of glory is a God of of love. His generosity never runs out. If anybody is generous, it's your Father in heaven. Praise God. The Creator, who's given you the power to create through your words. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. See, that's why the third country... You go there, and you know what they say? I need an eyeball. Can I get it now? I said, preacher, man, I need an eyeball. Can I get it now? And he, he, that person's faith ignites the preacher. And that preacher and that person come together in covenant, and they go to God's glory, and then generosity comes, and the man's, an eyeball will start rolling off that man's hand into that man's socket, praise the Lord. That's what's happening in these, in these countries. We're too laid back. We need signs and miracles and wonder. Or otherwise the, the deacons don't like it. They want to shut it down. Oh, we got uh, too, too much. Oh, it's too crazy for me. We just want faith. Well, too bad. We're going to walk with God. We're going to get our signs and miracles and wonder. I ain't got no deacons in here like that, do I? Praise the Lord. I got glory. Say, I got glory deacons in this place. You want to see the glory of God. That's why you come. Aren't you tired of the same old routine? You got to get down and get beat to. I want to see the glory of God. I want to see people come and say, man, you know what happened? Man, God blesses me. God did this for me. God gave me that job. God, they said that I had this, and I went over there. Cancellation, praise the Lord. Because I'm seeing with my spirit eyes. I'm believing with my heart, praise the Lord. See? The the God of glory is a God of love, and his generosity never runs out. He gives food to those who honor him. The reason why you always got food in your house is because somehow, some way, you've been honoring him, and you don't have more because you have not really been releasing full honor to him. And it ain't about material things, but it doesn't hurt to have them because you can't do it without them. So he gives food to those who honor him. Write this down. The good life begins when you honor God. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Oh, man, praise God. (laughs) 
when you honor God and give him the glory, the good life begins. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. My God, praise you, Lord. Everything good starts happening. Everything good starts happening to me. Praise God. So you, you need understanding in this area. It, this has not been taught to us. I'm learning this. I'm learning this. I, I, got, I got chief apostles teaching me this. See? And through the unction of the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm grasping the understanding. And it's my duty to bring it to y'all. And I am bringing it to y'all. Well, we, we ain't staying in the same place. This got to go. This got to go. We got to move with God. Go to Habakkuk chapter 2. That's what I hear in the spirit. Go to Habakkuk. Let me back this up. Let me back it up, please. Go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. I, I just hear Habakkuk 2. Once I'm there, he'll, he'll, he'll indicate me where we need to go. Habakkuk 2. Yes, sir. That's it. Let it out, man. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to let mine out. <laughs> Praise God. Man, somebody say hallelujah three times. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, I'll praise you when I'm feeling good. I'll praise you when I'm feeling bad. I'll praise you when I got money. And I'll praise you when I'm broke. I'll praise you. I'll praise you. I'll give you the glory. I'll give you the honor, even if my body don't want to. Okay, let's go to two, where is it? Yes, sir, where are you going, Lord? Where are you, getting me? Where are you, going? Where are you taking me, Lord? Oh, yeah, 2.14. Habakkuk 2.14. Yes, sir. Yeah, I like it. I love it, Lord. You there? Mm -hmm. Can I read this? Thank you. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. For the earth will be filled. Write that down. The knowledge of the glory of God. That's your new assignment. You have to learn about this knowledge. You, nobody ever taught you about this glory thing. You've heard it before. I mean, some of my uh, upline... My, my spiritual forefathers, they done it. I mean, we, I got one right now doing it, you know. I got two of them. My daddy's doing it and my great, and my, and, and my granddaddy's doing it. Amen. And my great granddaddy, Kenneth Hagin, who went on with the Lord, he did it. Greater glory. <laughs> and he said it, he said it. He said that we will go into a dimension that we have never seen before. So you got to prepare yourself. How you do it? Get rid of vanity. Get rid of vanity. All right? Okay. That's what you need, the knowledge of the glory of God. Praise God. All right? Without that glory, you won't be able to do nothing. Go to Psalm 73, verse 24. Psalm 73, verse 24. 73.24. I got it. 73.24. It's good to get scripture so that way the word backs it up. Praise the Lord. You know? Yeah. There's no sickness in the glory, Frank. There's no aging in the glory. You see somebody, you say, man, how old is that person? That person looks so young because they're walking in the glory. They learn to tap in. That person got a joy. That person never complains. Well, that person's walking in the glory of God. Praise the Lord. See? There's no sickness. There's no lack. 
And we can have the glory here. We can have the glory in this earth. In fact, you should be, you should be connected from earth to heaven so that you can be walking in the glory. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You're going to have, you're going to, have to change the way you think. You're going to have to change the way you've been doing things. You know, and you ain't going to be able to share this with your friends. They're going to have to see it in you. So today, I want you to become, make a quality decision and say, I'm going to be a glory carrier. Everyone that sees me will see the glory of God. I'm going to be a billboard for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Dustin, when they see you on your motorcycle, they're going to see that's a different man. That's something, something different about that man. Wow, that man looks good. Okay, son? They're going to see the glory. They're going to see the glory. Check it out. They're going to see the glory. Thank you. They're going to see the glory. Hallelujah, somebody. Remember, his just generosity never runs out. That's, a, that's living in the glory zone. Look what he says in verse 24, Psalm 73, verse 24. He said, you will guide me with your counsel. What's his counsel? His word, his Holy Spirit. By the way, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of glory. Praise the Lord. Amen? And then afterward, receive me to glory. See? So he counsels you. When you get counsel, he, he pulls you out of that mess that you've been. Okay? <clears throat> and then he, <clears throat> glory. And then he show you. He show you. Let, let, let everybody look at me right now. Some of you don't even know that you've been seeing the backside of God. Some of you have been like Moses. You have, you've been seeing the backside of God. But we're so much in our vanity and our pride, we think we're doing it. When you have that mess, that mess that you was in, and it got fixed, that was God's backside walking right out of that mess. Praise the Lord. Just like Moses. Moses, let me see your glory. He said, I can't show you my glory, son. You'll die. The illumination that comes from the glory of God. It's too strong. You can't handle it, son. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you see a little bit of me. I'll let you see the backside. And the moment he saw the backside, the glory of God made Moses look like a light bulb. He got filled up. He got illuminated. And I believe that right now when we teach these type of teaching, uh, uh, the knowledge uh, 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 of the glory of God, I believe there is a, 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 a light coming from heaven right now shining on us. And I believe there's angels going up and angels going down, just like... Like that escalator that, that Joseph, that Jacob saw. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So you can tap into your angel right now. And in the book of Hebrews, says that he, he sends angels to minister to us. Do you know what that means? To serve us. Praise the Lord. See, he's a now God. Praise the Lord. But we've been, we've been taught so, my God, we've been taught to wait. We've been taught to wait. You don't have to wait with God. There ain't no layaway with God. You don't have to make no appointment with God. God is the appointment. Man, I remember going into a box and confessing. And then he told me, come back later. Come back in three weeks. And I come back and I still didn't get my breakthrough. I ain't knocking nobody down. I'm just saying what I've been through, man. I've been through it. But now I step into the glory and I say, God, I'm the high priest of my house. And you're the high priest of your life. Lord, you know what I need. This is unbearable. This pain got to go. Sanctify yourself. Come on now. Make the cross on your own forehead, praise God. It's time for you to start laying hands instead of them laying hands on you. I wish somebody hear this glory thing and receive it in the name of Jesus. He's giving you power, praise God. But you got to go to that place where you can live in the glory zone. Write it down. It's called the glory zone. The glory zone. Go to 1 Chronicles when you finish writing that down. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 28. you got to go there, man. It's enough. I can't stand it. We're going to do 28 and 29.
time. See, God want to do with you, Sidney, but he, he did what he could, what, what they let him. You see, your mom, your, your, your dad, allow him to do so, you know, because you're the one to stop him. See what I mean? I know, I said, that's enough. That's enough. I don't want to do no more. Some of you get scared when God is moving in your life. You put a cap on God. That's enough. I can't handle it no more. It ain't about you. He wants to make you a, a blessing, a distributing center. Shut your mouth and follow the glory. And don't walk in vanity. Don't walk in pride. How did you get here? God brought me here. I don't even know how I got here. I got so much favor because I'm living in the glory zone. <laughs> See? And then you start attracting the, the right workers. The right workers will come. They'll, they'll want to serve that glory. Because you, you, you're a billboard. You're showing them, look, this is how I did it. This is how I did it. Praise the Lord. So see, Sidney, God wants to do something with you. He wants to do something supernatural. And that's why he put you with that family. See, that family don't know. They're in God's, they're in God, they're God's, they're in God's mafia. Yeah, I'm the Godfather here on earth. And I pray for them people. And no matter how silly they get, and you see them silly, they, they got no choice. They're going to serve God the rest of their life. They can go to the left. They go to the right. Listen, you, they can get a little piece of steak that make them feel good. <laughs> Only for a season. One day they put that steak in their mouth and it'll become rotten. <laughs> what am I doing eating this? They understand what I'm talking. Ain't nobody telling me nothing. No, I actually <laughs> Ain't nobody telling me nothing but him. He's telling me. How can, I pastor your, how can I pastor you if I don't know what's going on with you? I don't need to come and expose things to you and say, oh, girl, I understand you're doing that. I don't need to do that. That ain't my place. You tell me to stop, I stop. You tell me I want to move with you, I want to move with you. I want to be connected. Well, let's just be connected. Let's move. See, I know I won't fail because I'm connected. I'm doing what God calls me to do. See? Every day I see my dad. Over there, I had a seat for him. You know what I'm doing with that, son? I'm not getting familiar with him. Now, in the natural, people are like, this guy's stupid. No, you're stupid. You mean if you come in the presence of God, you won't have a seat for him? You just want to come any old way in the presence of God. <laughs> What's up, God? <laughs> no. And every time I sow into him, that gave me authority to pull from him. And I can ask, well, what about this? What about that? See? And he would just tell me. Whew. The last thing he told me on the plane, coming, and it was like a silent in the plane. He said, son, they ain't going to use you no more after 215. God ain't going to let them use you anymore. They don't have what you have. He put it in you. That was my seed. I got, I got my breakthrough. So now I know what I need to do. See? Now I know I got to act like a priest and a high priest and not a Mickey Mouse priest. Amen? There's something inside of me, something special God put in me, and I'm supposed to share with you and share with those that get connected to me. But it's got to be, see, Bart, Bart's got to be proper connection. Proper you, know, you can't pull anything out of the pot. See, the, re the reason why you love Kenneth Hagin, you got properly connected to him. But see, you don't understand, I never met. You don't need to meet the man. The anointing is there, man. The anointing is talking to you, praise the Lord. You got connected to that anointing. And then back in the late 70s and the 80s, Daddy Kenneth Hagin wanted to take us into the glory. But the people shut him down. Oh, I can't see that. Did you see that? People get scared. Well, why do you think you come to church? You come to church to get healed, get, get restored. No, you come to church just to hear a guy in the pulpit give you two or three scriptures and send you out. Something should be happening in the house of God. Praise the Lord. I don't even know where I'm at. Oh, yeah, First Chronicle 16, 28, 29. Give to the Lord, O family. Sounds like us of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Verse 29. Give to the Lord 
the glory due his name. Bring an offering. Come before him. Worship him. See, your worship is an offering. The Lord and the beauty of his holiness. We come in, we don't even want to do that. <clears throat> ah, this is too wild for me. I'm out of here. But you'll praise, you'll praise your team. Listen, I'm going to be real straight here. I got some of you men in here that if a beautiful woman go by, you'll praise her. <laughs> She's nice. But you can't praise God. Because that's out of the ordinary. Don't shut me down because I'm teaching good. You women, some of you women do it too. Mm, some, mm. And the guy's like a little rooster. Goo goo, boom. I'm walking by. Huh? See, you can praise that, but you can't praise God. Right, right. You can't praise God. I can do any of it. I praise God. I can't worship God. No, I can't worship God. No, 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 no. God forbid I go into that glory zone. God forbid if I get healed. God forbid if I get money so that I can bless the poor and help the widows and the orphans. God forbid. God forbid if I put money on some poor person's hand. God forbid if a man runs up to my car and does this. God forbid if I give him money. Right? God forbid my wallet is full. You don't have no food tonight. Eh? When I get back to the hotel, I'll feed myself. All right, God forbid. God forbid. It ain't about you. It's about you blessing somebody else. Praise the Lord. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Thank you, Father. Go to John chapter 15, verse 5. I know exactly where we're going. I'm trying to get you into the glory zone. And I will. The three rams we've been working in. I'm closing up soon. Three rams. <clears throat> it's been the faith realm, anointing realm. You know, it works for us. Jody, my daughter, it works for us. Oh, yeah, I'm full of faith. Who, who faith benefits? Me! Man, come on, family. I know I'm going to have faith. David, it, it better than me. I don't feel the faith. Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> the anointing, who it benefits? Me! Now, when I step into that glory zone, ain't, no, ain't nothing about me anymore. Now I do what Dad says. Because, I mean, you may... You may be in, in, in the middle of a cluster confusion, and he'll make you jump out of the car and give that family money. And they'll look at you. And that's exactly what they say without going to church. Hallelujah. Like that little housekeeper gave her $5. $5. He said, what can I do with five dollars? Well, five times 46, you do the math. Especially when they're making $120 a month. You ain't hearing me. You too fat. You ain't hearing me. You too fat. You got something to eat every night. $120 a month. Gave five dollars. She went, hallelujah. <laughs> and boy, I thought she was walking in heaven. And I was like, man, this is good. So you know your pastor. I like having Lou. I said, man, this is like, oh, God, this is great. Instead of being in the corner pushing dope, I'm pushing the word. Hey, come here, you. Praise the Lord. Jesus is good. Come here, you. And then, whoa, yeah. My family can eat tonight. Are you hearing me? Can you do that? Can you live in the glory for God? Can you give God honor? Will you stop complaining what you don't have? You don't have it because you don't ask. And if you don't ask, you won't receive. Too bad. I hope it hurts you. I hope it hurts you so much, so much that you'll change. That's my job. 
I got you right now in the mat. And the Holy Spirit got your arm in a bar lock. Ready to rip it off. Praise the Lord. It's time to change. There's so much you have. So much you have. And there's a door that he wants you to walk through. And you won't, and you won't experience no more what you've been experiencing. Say, I receive it, Pastor. You got it, Jonah? You've seen it. You've seen it. You know what? Guy asked me, you got some shoes for me? I looked at his feet. His feet were so small. I was like, man, <laughs> your feet are small. I said, I'm 13, man. Look, man, see? 13! I said, you ain't going to fit. I said, no, I'll give you money. Go get some shoes. And I said, hey, and I go and buy a shirt. No drinky pool tonight. Money for shoes. <laughs> oh, he sold money. He said, hot thinking that get me a drink tonight. <laughs> hey! And I forget all my problems. Exactly. So you buy shoes. No drinky pool. Stay away from that babaku. That's fire water for Haitian. Stay away from that babaku. Babaku, put hair in your head. <laughs> you know I didn't drink it. <laughs> I want to have a full set of hair. Happy people, happy people. Ain't no job. They create jobs. That's a word for somebody. Create some, some funds. You can do it. Ain't no job. Excuse me. Do you have a position here in this place? They create jobs. They got a concept that we don't have here. God's glory is over there. Signs, miracles, and wonders are still happening. Yeah, yeah. I'm too fat. I can eat what I want. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine. He who abides in me. And I in him bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. 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 What happened when we blessed those people? Hallelujah! <coughs> that allowed them to get more. You understand? That allowed them to get more. They, they, they thank God. Hallelujah. Some of us get a job or a different position. You know, we don't even say nothing to God. I earned this. Really, you did. You're so full of vanity. It's unreal. And the devil's like, yeah. <laughs> He's got my spirit. She's got my spirit. That's the spirit he had. He wanted to be higher than God. Okay. Now go to John chapter 12. You're, you're in John already. Might as well. Go to John chapter 12. Let's see. I love that baby. Let her scream, please, in Jesus' name. You don't understand. That's purity. And that's bringing the blessing of the Lord in this house. Thank you, Father, for wisdom. Ain't you happy that your pastor got wisdom from the Lord? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I could be a butthead too, you know, but I don't want to be a butthead no more. <clears throat> I want to praise God. I want to do God with God's will. See? Everybody's there? This is what Jesus said. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. So this is what God's telling you. The hour has come that you should walk in the glory. You say you have Jesus in you? then you should be walking in the glory. Amen? How many of you have Jesus in your heart? All of you. Don't know. It ain't about church. Just say, yes, son. Say, yes, I do. Then you should be walking in the glory. Okay? Faith is wonderful, but we're moving out of faith. We're going into to the glory. The anointing is wonderful, but we're moving. See, we're going into a place, uh, Bart, with total dependency on God. That's it. I don't even depend on my own faith. I got faith. Thank God I got faith. 
But I don't depend on my faith. I depend on God. He's the one to put the faith in me. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even have what I have. Come on, somebody. See, I know I'm anointed. I know I got gifts. I can do the job. But I don't depend on that. I depend on the glory. Somebody say amen. amen. Now write this down. Glory only comes through intimacy and close relationship. Jillian, how did you and, and Sydney became good friends? Intimacy, relationship. How did you become close to that lady? And how did you produce that child? Intimacy, relationship. Sharice is laughing. <laughs> no matter how crazy it was, it, 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 it had to have intimacy. The proof is in the pudding. She's right there. <laughs> when are you going to have intimacy with your father? When are you going to get properly connected with your father? Are you, are you hearing what the Lord is saying to you? Or are you too old? <laughs> are you too old? I'm too old. He called Abraham a young man at 100 years old. Anybody 100 in here? I'm going to slap the lie out of you. Glory comes through intimacy and relationship. You need to reproduce glory in your house. So you stop treating the people. See, because the flesh wants you to treat the people around you less so that you can feel better. I know it's funky. I know it smells. I know it may not be the way you want it, but try it. Do something good and watch good comes to you and saturate you and overcome you. Let the goodness of God, it's time. You have no choice. Either you do it or he'll kill you. That's it. You can hear a mouse squeaking here. But it's true. You got no, no choice. You have to do what he's calling you to do. It ain't about you. It's about the people that are drowning out there. You're a lifesaver to them. And that's it. That's it. You understand? That's why he put you together. So he's going to make sure, praise the Lord, that you're fine, you're all right, so you can do what he's asking you to do. That's why. That's why the increase is coming. But we, oh, oh it's for my family. Oh, now I, now I can come out of this debt. You don't understand how long. Yeah, that's the process. That's the process, Bobby. Because he wants you to have total dependency on him. Because some of us, if we had no problem, we wouldn't even think about God. Gosh, man. So you need awareness. Write it down. Awareness and knowledge, according to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. You need the knowledge of the Lord, the knowledge of the glory of God, the knowledge of the glory. Of, I need glory in my life. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord. I need it. In fact, the Bible says I need to go from glory to glory. I need to go from level to level. You understand, son? You understand? Level to level. The next belt's going to be harder. And when you get that one that, is, that shows that you did accomplishment, that you went through your grace, it will become more harder. And then you'll find yourself in a situation that You'll become slow because you really don't want to do what you, you know that you can do. You know that if you want to, you can rip the throat and bring it out. You know that. But you're in another place. You're in a place of revelation. Come on! We used to do it when we didn't have God. Boom! You're dead. But we don't do it. See what I'm saying to you, David? See? And the reason why he wants is he wants you to pick up your family to the next level. So he'll remove one habit and give you another habit. I know about habits. You don't know me when I was in the Bronx. Some of you see me with a certain hand. You go, you look like a thug. I said, well, I guess the thug can't get that. that, that. Yeah. <laughs> Mom laughing over there. Praise the Lord. It's not about killing. It's about healing. It's about healing. It's not about being aggressive and like a nut. It's about bringing God's presence, peace, restoration in a place. 
The reason why you're like a crazy Transvalian devil is because you still don't have the glory inside of you. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. You're ready to shoot the dog and shoot the cat. Or the whole family sometimes. So we go from glory to glory. Go to 2 Corinthians 3.18, please. Please, please, please. And then I'm going to give you a key, and that's it, because we've been here for a while. Jesus is bringing you into the glory. Jesus is bringing you into the glory. That's his job. He already did it 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, Daddy Don. Now your job is just to tap into the glory. Say, I'm tapping into this glory. I want restoration. Don't worry what they promised you. Don't worry what they said they'll do. Let it go. What matter is that you're honoring God. You look good, Deacon Rory. You look good. Transformation took place right now. You look so different. I mean, you look nice with the suit and the jacket. It's awesome. You're my deacon. But you don't know what happened to you right now. You feel it? Amen. And that's why he said, I want the process is that. In June, it's going to take off. Uh-huh. And then the reason why God has you doing, going there, here, there, here, Bart, is because God wants to use you. God wants to use you now. And he's going to give you that place that you can get fed. See, it's important to get fed. That's why I'm properly connected. Everybody say this with me. Properly connected. And I'm serving and I'm sowing. Yes, you are. Every one of you here. I know your spirit. So we need to bring knowledge and awareness into your spirit so then you can walk in 2015 in the fullness of the glory. Amen? Anybody understand what the fullness of the glory is? In, in, in heaven, there is the fullness of the glory. Deacon uh, Frank, there is no sun, no moon. The glory of God illuminates heaven. So that's what should be in your house. The glory of God should be illuminating your house. And how you do that? By keeping an honorable attitude. You have to have an honorable attitude. Praise the Lord. Everybody read at the same time, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Read it. For we all with unveiled faces beholding, as in a mirror, the mirror is the word, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. That's the key right there. You're being transformed. You're being transformed. You're being transformed. Somebody say, thank you for, thank you for transforming me, God. My spirit is different now. Into the same image, from glory to glory, just by the spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of glory. You got the Holy Spirit in you now, you're being changed, man. You got it, honey? You're being changed. You don't see things like you used to. Things don't bother you like they used to. Praise the Lord. It just don't bother you anymore. You go from glory to glory. And God is giving you the power and the dominion to do it. Praise the Lord. And Jesus is the one who brought you into the glory. The glory of God is being, being revealed with fresh power and new, and new demonstration in your life. Praise God. And write this down, and I'm closing right now, right? This is fifth, number five. Five closes. This is fifth. Some of you are trying to comprehend, and some of you are into it, that you didn't even know this was the fifth closing. <laughs> Those who seek the new will find the new. Those who seek the new will find, that's the prophetic word for you. Those who seek the new will find the new, new level in the glory. New level in the glory. New level in the glory, praise God. Seek the new. It's happening. You don't want to go, but I got to go. But don't say I want to make more money. Don't do it because of the money situation. Do it because... Some, when you get there, you're going to be able to bless somebody with the glory of God. 
Let me tell you something, family. If you chase money, you'll never have it. You need vision. Wherever the vision is, there is your provision. Vision produces provision. All right. I want to thank your viewers out there for see, uh, uh, tuning in to Seeing the Impossible, Faith Center, <clears throat> which pretty soon, the Lord's been speaking to me. We're going to go to another new name and a new level. Yeah, I know that. Praise the Lord. I'm not afraid. I'm not attached. I'm attached to you, Jesus. I'm attached to you, God. Thank you, Father God. Bless those people watching, and may the Lord speak to them about this wonderful teaching on the glory. God bless you. See you real soon. Bye-bye. Come on, let's give God.